Have a good night. And welcome to Word of the Day. We are live in Frequency5FM.com, radio and internet broadcasting. We are located at Bremley and Eglinton in Scarborough. It's a sad moment for me, but I, I'm your host for Word of the Day. And tonight's show is dedicated to my son. Also, his mother's show is dedicated also to him. It's in loving memory to Malik. Now we call in tonight's show Community Family Tribute to Malik. Malik tragi tragically lost his life last week. And we want the family, the community family, to come together. And we are here to rejoice. We are here to mourn and cry, but most of all, we are here to lift God higher. I want to introduce you to a person who knew Malik from a little boy and who baptized Malik, and her name is Pastor Denise Gillard. Hello, good night everyone. I want to um, to share a scripture with you and then um, my heart. Isaiah 43, two to the first part of verse three says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you cross rivers, you will not drown. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned, nor will the flames hurt you. This is because I, the Lord, am your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I am so um, honored to be here uh, this evening to uh, share uh, tribute of memory of Malik. I remember uh, the little boy that he was when he was a little boy and um, came to, to our church, Living Hope. He was always smiling, always helpful, a little mischievous, um, full of fun, and uh, a, a very good boy. You know, he would help and uh, do what he was asked to do and go above and beyond. He liked to help and sometimes was the last one helping, delaying, um, leaving. These are very good memories and it's very um, painful for us to hear of his tragic loss. And um, we truly believe that our youth and young people are created for life. The word of God says that we have to choose life. And so in these times, it's hard to make sense of um, our loss. But I'm so glad to serve a God who can be depended on to get us through these times. And um, I certainly believe that uh, Malik's life is, was not in vain, neither is death. And, and um, so many times we hear people talk about wake up calls to the community, but I, I don't want to issue a wake up call, but rather just a, a call to all of us, no matter how young or how old, to understand how precious our life is. And we don't know how much time we have. And, the question is, what are we doing with our time? Because despite everything, we have a Father God who loves us. And that's what I want to say to some young person watching or listening tonight. God loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done or who you are or where you've been. God loves you for who you are. Thank you, Pastor Denise. I would like to pass it over to her, her husband, Wilton. Um, good night, everyone. Um, once again, we're here to celebrate Malik's. And um, I want to sing the chorus of this song. It, it talks about pain and it will all be gone away. No more night and no more pain, no more 
on tears and never crying again. Praises to the great I am. We will live in the light of the Never crying again. Praises to the great I am. We will live in the light of the risen Lamb. Thank you very much, Wilton. We'll pass the mic around. Anybody wants to pay tribute or words of encouragement, you're welcome to do so. I think I need to do this. Good evening, everyone. To my nephew, who lights up the room when he walks into it, always with that big smile. He had a big heart, and he can love like nobody can. And tonight, I want to say... If you're halting between two opinions, young people, today is the day to make the choice. Choose life. Choose God. I also want to say that God came to give us life and to give us life abundantly. And we can live the abundant life right here on earth as he inspires us and come to live within our hearts. I want to encourage my brother who stands like Job and only God knows and his wife and how they stand. And when he rejoices, this little light of mine, I, I'm going to let it shine and hide it on the bushel. And he goes out to the community and he wants to make it known that he serve a risen Lord. And for those who are crying and mourning, there is hope, a hope that make it not a shame, and that is found in Jesus Christ. So be encouraged, and we're surely going to miss Mally, but we have the hope that we'll see him again. God bless you. Thank you, sis. Um, what I remember most about Malik was that he was a loving, a loving boy. In turning into a man, he was still the same. Anytime that he would see me, he would still say, I love you, and I'll see you soon. And he was the most passionate and caring young man that anybody could ever meet. And through this time of mourning, I hope that this song really resonates and lets you know that though his body is not here, his spirit is around us, always guiding and watching over. So the song is called River. It is a cover. If you're looking for the big adventure And gold is all that's on your mind If all you want someone to take your picture Then I won't waste your time See, maybe I'm too quiet for you, and you probably never noticed me. But if you're too big to follow rivers, how you ever gonna find the sea? So follow me, I'll be a river, river. I'll move the mountains for you, so follow me. I'll be a river, river, I'll do the running for ya, so follow me. I'll be a river, river, I'm here to keep you floating, so follow me. I'll be a river, 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 yeah. If all you want are answers to 
to your questions and you can't seem to find no love for free if you're looking for the right direction then darling look for me see i can make the load much lighter i just need you to confide in me but if you're too proud to follow rivers, how you ever gonna find the sea? So follow me, I'll be a river, river, I'll move the mountains for ya. So follow me, I'll be a river, river, I'll do the running for ya. So follow me. I'll be your river, river, I'm here to keep you floating, so follow me. I'll be your river, 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 yeah. Wherever you're standing, I will be by your side. Through the good, through the bad, I'll never be hard to find. I said, wherever you're standing, I will be by your side. Through the good, through the bad, I'll never be hard to find. Thank you, thank you, love. Nicole. I remember Nicole. I remember Nicole. And I saw her the other day. Man, I say all the children are coming home. It's just time before all the kids come back home. Anyway, Charlie, before I pass it to you, I'll give it to Andy because I think you want to sing a song too, do you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Every Andy, Julie. My other sister, Julie. <laughs> Tonight is a very sad night for me. Um, Malik was a premature baby. I was the first person saw him after he was born. Um, these twins were born so quickly. My brother went to park the car and by the time he came back, they came. Malik was always this little giggly child, always laughing. When he goes to hug you, he would throw his whole self on you, you know. And as Sister Denise mentioned, um, he was a bit mischievous, but not in a bad way. Tonight, I want to raise up my brother and his wife. I know Gail, you know, she has her good moments. She has her bad moments. But... My brother and his wife has always put God first, and I think they'll get through this. I just want them to know that the family and friends will surround them. Rest in peace, Malik. Love you. Thank you very much. God bless you, sis. Is there anybody out until he comes back? My name is Garfield Frey, and I am uh, the one of the senior leaders at Kingdom City Church that Reverend Denise attends. And um, I was really touched by uh, the moment she shared with us, and we took the time to pray with her and for the family. But I felt um, I needed to be here this evening. And as I was coming over from the other end of the city, I was just asking, uh, what would he, what would the Lord want to say to? to whoever, I didn't know what the context was, but I felt um, this is specifically for the family remaining behind. And um, Denise actually read from Isaiah 43, but I wanna go to verse 19, which actually says, behold, I do a new thing. And now it shall spring for it shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And I perceive in my spirit that I am, um, Malik 
has been a great loss, and by your words, I've, I've sensed that, I've, I've heard that. But I, but I sense that to the parents, the family that is around it, I just sense that there's a defining moment, that there'll be a turning, that something new mm -hmm. is about to um, be evolved from this. And then um, my mind went to a song that was actually written in the aftermath of a, a very similar incidents where the friend of the writer actually lost his, um, his, his child and my, my I can identify with this because it must have been 13 years ago I had to um, interim it to officiate at my older brother's um, funeral he was shot and um, killed and it's one of those moments that it's hard to describe and I'm not the parent so I can only imagine what my mother especially went through no respect disrespect to the fathers mm -hmm. but um it, and the memory seemed to never go away and and, it, and the pain seemed to come and go but um the, if i could sing as good as you guys I probably would have sings. but it says god will make a way where there seems to be no way he works in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me the author of this song actually got this as he was on route. The story goes to the a very similar thing like tonight, and this was what what came back to my memory. He will be my guide, hold me closely to his side. He will be your guide, with love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Right now it seems difficult, to, but God is there with you. So I just pray that you will remember that uh, the songwriter actually says, tears are our language that God understands. And when we don't understand it, it's okay to cry. It's okay to um, express that. And through our tears, he takes us by the hand uh, and we will see the dawn of a new day, dawn of a new season. Thank you for the opportunity to be here, and um, God bless you as we continue to pray with you guys, especially in the aftermath. As a church, we tend to do that more in the aftermath because we realize the importance of that. So God bless you. I think I took you. Good evening, everyone. Um, We're here to celebrate the life of my cousin, Malik Joseph Ellis, a 21-year-old young man that gave his life for just being a human being. Uh, these, these young people, they go through their own struggles, their own trials, and we forget that we've been there. A lot of people want to say whatever they want to say and how it shouldn't have happened and what should happen and what should not happen. However, it's about life. Uh, a lot of times we, we jump on bandwagons right now. One of the bandwagons that's going on is Black Lives Matter. And it's not just about Black Lives Mattering. It's about all lives mattering, and this loss, it was near and dear to my heart because a few years ago, Malik and his twin brother, they were at my house, and they're like my sons, my nephews, not just my cousin. And when we got the news the other morning, um, I was there at the house with his mom. We were in the kitchen preparing for church to prepare a meal for church. And the week before, they were all over at the house, the kids, their friends, everybody. And what we're learning from all of this is that they all need us. If there is a need, there's, there's a need that's needed for these young people. And I once was one of those young people. 
And Raul and Gail, they never, ever turn their backs on anyone. Their door is always open. Mm -hmm. And their kids are the same way. They always bring somebody home. Their safety net is everybody else's safety net. They have no problem in saying, come. You know, um, if they're at my house, come on over. He won't mind. They're at home. Come on over. They won't mind. They never ask us, but, <laughs> you know, the love that they have, they got it from home. But we're never going to stop loving him because he's always shared that love. And tonight I'm going to share a song that actually speaks about that love that's in need. Joseph, if you're ready. So um, I just want to say my heart is heavy, but we're going to make it. We are going to make it as a family. We're going to stand strong. We're going to stand firm in God's love. And we're going to let them know that we love each and every one of them despite any differences. It's not about religion. And I'm a God-fearing person. I'm a Christian, but... We can't let that difference between us stop us from loving them because we need to love them no matter what. If you're ready, I'm ready. To say yeah could mean the world disasters to toy and let them through tears and pain what I want the world to know is lost in need of a love today don't delay send your friends right away It's breaking many hearts. Stop it, please, before it's gone to fall. Possessions, and if we let, we let it destroy everybody. We all must take precautionary measures. It's love and peace we treasure. If you hear me when I say. Of a love today. Don't delay. Send your sins right away. Well, hate going round is breaking many hearts. Stop it, please. Before it's gone too far. We love you, Malik. We'll see you on the other side. And may you rest in peace until we meet again. Thank you very much, Shirley. I must say, we serve a great and mighty God. No matter what we're going through, he just comes and comforts us. You know, in the week prior to this, I was feeling 
the abundance of living in the presence of God. I call it the dream land. And uh, one person <laughs> wants to know, this guy's spirally crazy. Now, how you doing? I'm living the dream. They asked me at work, how you doing? You, I'm living the dream. You know, when you really dig closer to the word of God and find out, Jesus said, I'm the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And he shall go out and come in, and he shall find pasture. Okay? You say, anybody who come before me is a thief, a liar, and a destroyer. He said, but I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So uh, uh, the week I was living the abundant life. And I don't know what God was preparing me for. But boy. I was feeling so much joy. And I was, I was living in the abundance. For some reason, I wasn't thinking about tomorrow, but I was living in the moment. And it's so great that God says, tomorrow never promise. It was never promise. So why don't we live for today? Live and do the things that God wants us to do today. Love more. Mm -hmm. Give more. Mm -hmm. Hug more. And this situation taught me one thing. I always do it, but I need to do it more. The Bible says for us to excel in the good things. Excel in the good things. So what this tragedy taught me is I got to do it more. Because I'm going to meet somebody now. I don't know if I'm going to see them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So this is how we have to take life at the moment. And everybody who we come in contact with is a candidate for the kingdom of God. Amen. So we can't despise them. We have to serve them with a childlike heart, just like Jesus did. We can't judge them. Because he tell us not to. He tell us for us to take this, the plank out of our eyes before we take the speck out of others' eyes. So he call us, first of all, for self-examination. And you know what? I'm glad I'm doing this. The main reason why I'm glad I'm doing this because I have to encourage myself first. I got to live first doing the things that God wants me to do. I have to be the example before I'm able to encourage others. And each of us, if we want to see what God can do, let us start doing what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, why call me Lord, Lord, and you're not doing what I tell you to do? So we all have an opportunity in this moment, to reach out and touch someone. And I'm telling you, for me, the abundance life continue. For me, the joy continue Amen. until, mm -hmm. I mean, you say, Satan is trying to mm -hmm. stop me. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Satan, you can't keep a good man down mm -hmm. because I'm walking in the presence mm -hmm. and in the power of the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And I'm here. To exalt him in good times and in bad times. And all you did here today is fire me up. And I'm ready to get more fired up. You ain't going to stop me. In Jesus' name, I would like everybody to know we serve a great and mighty God. And serving people, serve him while you can. God bless you all. And if there is anybody more, I'm going to still continue passing the mic around. Hello, good evening. Um, being here as part of the family, we go way, way back. 
long before Malik was even thought about. I know these people, we were teenagers, put it that way. And we grew together. We came a long way. We had our own lives, you know, we, we lived, we enjoyed our lives. And then we, we had kids. And these people, they, they ran away with the kids because I'm still trailing. But <laughs> the thing is, you know, that knowing Malik and his family, Malik was always the happy child. We used to tease him. He was a small one, but he was <laughs> the one that he's going to let you know I'm here. I love you. He's always smiling. I'm not putting Malcolm down. Malcolm was like the shy one, but Malik, he was outgoing. You know, he was... He let you know that he was there. He appreciates you more. He, he made you feel good that here, these young people still connect with us, although we're not that old, <laughs> but you know, old enough to show respect. And that is what I love about Malik. So when i heard about the tragedy and what happened and i heard it was malik you know my heart sank because all i can see is this smiling face and feel this hug that will no longer be there i wouldn't see his face but i'm here to say thank god we know that he's smiling down from us from heaven He's looking down and he's saying, Hi, Auntie Bib, how are you? Hi, Malik. I love you. Always well. God bless you. For Gail and Raul, I do not know how to say I understand. I could never understand. We all lost different relatives and, you know, family members. But when you lose a child, I think that is something that is hard. I know I lost a sister and I'm still aching from it. So I guess in a way I can say I feel some of your pain. I will understand. But you know what? Looking at the two of you, man, you guys faith and courage is something that I look to and I keep saying I wish I can get to that point where no matter what we're gonna stand up and fight the battle young people there is only one word out there for you love one another love one another that's how we made it. We love one another. And you all need to learn to do that. We are all the same people. We're all from the same God. Let us learn to love one another. Put the hate and the, the fighting aside. And let's walk around as we all say. Learn to love and hug. Let's start giving hugs. You don't have to know the person. But hug them. Give them a smile. A good word. Okay? Take care. Thank you. That was my adopted sister. <laughs> Everybody go. Pass her on. No one is it? Pass it on. Okay. I'll pass it around to a very good friend of mine. Good evening, everybody. My name is Angela Curry, and I, I am devastated, actually, with um, learning about 
feel and um, and Raw. I met just this year. I met Gail and Raw, and she's a fashion designer. And um, her husband Raw came in here, and we were deciding on content for the radio show. And Raw said, "I don't know what to say." And um, Gail, of course, in fashion, and Raw started with word of the day. You know, and it's amazing what has happened over the past six months since Gail and Raw have been here. This whole platform has been, trans, um, how do you say, transformed. Mm -hmm. And I think in what's going on, I always say, Gail, we have so much work to do. And I see that now with what has happened with her family and uh, what they're going through. But I stand with them. And I know the family, now that I've met everyone, they will stand strong and support Gail. But I just want to talk touchly about Raul. You know, he didn't have anything to say with half an hour show, but now he wants a two hour show. <laughs> so he got his, you know, and um, on Thursdays he would come in at, you know, when he's looking at his watch, his wife is taking too long, he has to say the word. Joseph has three kids and they would come in every Thursday and they would say, where's my Jesus music? You know, and last week there was this thing that happened in here after he was fishing, finished with the word of the day. Joseph's son, son just started dancing, you know, and if you know Joseph's son, you know, he was always, he knows everybody and he was like wanting more and we kept on playing the music and playing the music and he was just dancing and he was sweating and he was dancing and he was just, so the word touched him. And I said to Raul, you think that your word is not touching anybody? It is. It touched a nine-year-old boy. And I'm so grateful to have Gail. I, I really, um, you know, I don't know what this will be six months from now, but I'm here for you. I'm here from the, for the Ellis family, and I am here for whatever it is that you need. Uh, you know, I feel lost today because this is not supposed to happen, but there is a reason why it happened, and I know now that we must, we must do more for the young people. Mm -hmm. There is a great need that I see come through this door. And I think now is the time for us, the elders, the old ones who know what it is, where we're coming from. We're coming from a community, you know, where we supported each other's children. You know, if you know where we're coming from, if they were doing something, everybody would know before they reach home. Mm -hmm. And before they reached home, you know, they would get it before they reach home, and when they get home, they would get it. And so this is the community that we need to bring back so that we can make sure that each and every boy and girl reach home safe, okay? Because you know how they are. They are invincible. But we know that with our support and with our guidance, they will be more than they, they are so amazing. They are so talented. They come in here and they blow my mind with what they can accomplish with just a little phone. So let's support them and let's stand with um, with Gail and Raul and the Alice family. Thank you again, Raul, and you know, more blessings to you as you continue with the word. We will give you that two hour show. Mm -hmm. And we miss Malik and may he rest in peace. And we're just getting started. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Angela has been a real blessing to me. And if you want to see how somebody get excited when something good is happening, <laughs> like a little child, that's who Angela is. You know, and I am so thankful to be, to be part of our, the Frequency 5 family. And you know what? It's blessing from now on abundantly. God promised that. And he says, everywhere our feet touch. Okay. All right. We are now beginning to touch. We are now beginning to take back ground. Amen. Satan don't like that. But you know what? God is in control. Yes. Not about Satan. It's about God. And this is the way he wants us to live on earth. Let our light shine. 
And we can, I'm going to live my life shining. I don't know about you. But I'm encouraging you to follow Jesus. He is our example. And the floor is open. Still. You know, the Bible says, Blessed be the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may become comforters. And I know that it's a tragic, tragic situation. And um, when I heard, in fact, Wilton called me and um, didn't get me and and I just took my phone and I was just reading and got the details. And I said to myself, I wonder if this is what Wilton called me about. And a few moments later, he called me and confirmed that this was what he wanted to tell me. And I just wanted to say, man, that I'm really pained because I knew him a little bit, can't remember all the memories, but we went to church together. And I know, Raul, that you love God. I saw Gail just recently and I, she was rejoicing and we played basketball together. The little that I know, but I know you love God and God loves you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to say this, you know, that I'm in your corner, man, and I'm, I'm praying for you. And I see that you also love God and and God is your sun and shield. And that means that, you know, the sun provides everything. Yes. Warmth and heat and light and energy and food. God says, he's your sun. And what the sun can't provide, he says, he's your shield. Mm -hmm. this, the God protects. He provides for you everything. And he protects you. And... You know, you, what you're displaying tonight is truly remarkable because you're saying that, you know, your God is not based upon the goodness of your circumstances. Yes. God is God and he's your source. Yes. And it reminds me of what, what, what Satan tried with Job. Job, God, if you took away everything that he has, then he'll curse you. But you're proving him wrong. Yes. And, you know, you're saying your God is your God. And I just want to say, man, I'm in your corner, and I want to say to Gail and to the family that we're praying for you, and God is going to take you through. And I want to say to, you know, I, I happen sometimes to work with some young people and I am a father, a stepfather to some young people, and I know the challenges that they face. You know, and I sometimes talk to some young people that I work with. Um, and one of the issues that comes up often is, you know, the idea that they don't have any father, and so they're lost. And a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, you know, a young man was talking to me and asked me, well, so how can we change a situation in our community? And I said to them, you know, in the, I said to them two things that has helped me. And one is, and I asked them about, you know, what has brought them in the situation that they have found themselves in. And all of them have said, you know, I don't even know my father. And, and, and they asked me, so what is an answer? And I said, you know what? the father, the loss of the father. In the case of Malik, it's not the loss of the father. The father was there. But I appeal to any father this evening that is out there and you've lost contact with your son and you know where your son is, reach out and touch that son. They need you. And that's why they are lost, man, and they need you. And Raul is a great example, and some of us here, you know, we're in the corner for our children, and I appeal to you to be there for your children and reach out and touch them. Just don't rejoice about how many you have, how many you have brought into the world, but be there for them too, because they need you. 
And so we're all, I'm with you and I'm going to pray for you. And I, we're praying for the community that, you know, that's one thing that I do pray for a community that, that God will um, enter in and change the situation in our communities. God bless you, man. Thanks a lot. That's a brother in the Lord and a former basketball player. I think he retired. <laughs> he gave up on us, you know. We used to go down to the church there on Monday nights. So we have real fun. Real fun. We, we bring some young people along with us. So these young people think they, are, they can outplay the old people. But most of the times, they end up being more tired than me. <laughs> and, and you know what? I thank God for that moment where I didn't get to spend with some of them and run around with some of them and show them I might be old, but I'm not cold. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to keep me down. <laughs> anyway, this is part of my basketball family. There, there's two more representatives here. Do I need to yeah, move yes. over there? Yes. Over here. Hi everyone, um, my name is Ray, um, I didn't expect to speak tonight, I didn't expect, I uh, know what to expect tonight, but um, I'm truly touched tonight by everyone coming and giving their um, speech and their hearts moment um, to Brother Rob. I believe tonight that um, I've learned a lot, and I believe everyone has learned a lot as well, because uh, they say um, death brings us closer, but I believe that tonight is very special because it's an anointing night for everyone to come together to hear and to be edified in everything, in every speech that we have said tonight. And I, uh, even though I don't know um, uh, Malik, but I know Brother Rob for a while now. Um, as he said, he's a, you know, he's, I've seen him in the beginning. We were like, uh, you know, brothers, not all that good in basketball, but as it progressed, we got better and better, and we um, outdueled the youth, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm close to his age, right? And um, I feel like I, I still have a lot to learn. But uh, anyways, um, I'm not going to stay too long in the microphone because we have two hours to go, right? So, but I just want to say that, um, you know, even though at our age, we have to reach out to the youth because we're still young and we were once youth before, right? And we have to uh, dig down and see um, where our life is and to their life, right? And we can't judge. We have to pray continuously for them, especially that we have uh, children, whether it's a boy or girl. We have to continue to pray for them, do our part, um, give them the lessons of life, right, so that they will have that. And um, as much as we can, you know, we just um, bring them to, you know, church as possible so that they can hear the gospel, they can hear and to, um, to, to witness and to feel the joy of other youth that are in the ministry as well. So I think part of our job and our mission for next year, I believe, and, and I've been given that... Um, that answer from the Lord is that we have to reach out to the youth because, you know, they're the next generation, right? And they need to, um, you know, be out of these situations, love one another, come together in unity, right? Whatever you're, not, not just black or white, but every youth of every ethnic, we have to come together, yes. right? And tonight, I believe that um, I'm so inspired by by everything and every speech and you know God has anointed everyone here tonight through the love and the passion that we have and uh, let's just pray everyone that we can um, have the goals and have all this thing done because the Lord is using us for a great purpose and remember that in these things it's not uh, um, his death is not by vain but it's by the glory of God that comes and unite us now together to go on and do the things that we need to do Right, so let's band together and let's celebrate this life. This Malik and and uh, his family, um, brother Raul and family, and let's uh, put ourselves together and let the Lord's will be done. Thank you. Amen. 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 That's right. Here's my next brother, my basketball. 
We are basketball opposition. <laughs> Not friends. <laughs> we compete. We really compete. We sure do. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, my name is Chris, and um, you know, I'm honored to be here uh, by the grace of God. And well, I heard the news on when was it? Uh, Sunday. Sunday. When when uh, Brother Wilton uh, called us with our fellow brothers. Uh, I, I, I broke down, even though I saw the, the kid the one time. Um, basketball that we play is, is almost like, like a fam family, almost like, like a rivalry kind of thing. It's oh, yes, that, yes, that yes, yes. competitive. And then when I, when I saw Raul, it's almost like I connected like a father and son. I lost my father a year and a half ago to, to alcoholism. We didn't have the best relationship, um, but when he did not drink, he, he was the lifeline of the party. He brought people together, and his love was people. Mm -hmm. and by the grace of God, um, my heart is, is with the youth, and, and the Lord has used me quite a bit. And you know, in my own experience uh, and trials, I really ask for, for, for everyone to, to come together. And, you know, the Lord said that they were gonna, they're gonna beat their swords into plowshares and their yes. spears into pruning hooks. And we're not gonna see that any longer. And, What's happening now in the world is definite uh, a sign of his coming, and that the Lord cannot stand to see another soul lost and perish. You know, it's, it's gone way too far, and, and we we do ask the Lord for 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 your coming to be quick and swift, and the harsh punishment and judgment for the wicked, for they will not prevail. You know, and you know it's it's, it's a blessing to be here and in the fullness of the Spirit. As I'm getting hot, <laughs> hot in the Spirit, and you know I, I thank the Lord for. For all that he has done and you know my extension to, to the family you know god bless you guys and this like like rose said this is just gonna fire for us all you know to prevail against wickedness Amen. Uh, no man shall do this to, to one another there's no excuse for this we invite the kids to come out the youth even in the the adults to, to come and join us down at the, the methodist church at uh, morningside and john stoner come play and then fellowship because you know it Life is too short, you know, be around brothers and sisters, be around people. That's what we're called to be. You know, the Lord created us for one thing, one thing only, to, to be a family. Amen. And he will weed out those who have no place in this coming kingdom. You know, I give glory to God. As though my dad not be here, I, I consider Raul as, as my new father. You know, <laughs> Thank you. Well, quite a handsome guy, I tell you. you know what I'm and he's still got it. And we, we have, yeah. even though we haven't played just yet on, on the same... Uh, same team, but you know what? God, God made made it happen. You know, it's just. I just wish that everybody come one once and for all, and then stop the, the madness. You know, and then what's happening now on this earth is definitely a sign that revelation is playing out. And we, as the Christians, we know this. That we will not let no one drag us down. In the name of Jesus, we pray this. Amen. Thanks a lot, Chris. I just love playing basketball with Chris. <laughs> now, I remember I'm telling Angela one time, I said, man, we're going to have church done here. Yeah. And I never knew what it, how it would evolve. I was saying to her, you know what? This is not just a studio. This is not just a, a, fashion, a fashion place. I said, listen. Everybody who come in this place must feel welcome. Amen. They must feel like they're in the kingdom of God. And we are here to exercise and reach out and to show them the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, I'm, I'm so fired up. I'm telling you, I'm so fired up. And I think Malik has... Not some of me, lots of me in him. <laughs> and I ask yes. him to pour out more spirit in me. Amen. And like this is the beginning of a new day, a new season. God is doing something new and good. Like I told you, I didn't know what it was. And I didn't know what he was preparing me for. But loved ones, brothers and sisters, friends, Ah, I'm consumed. I'm consumed being in the presence of God. For me, it's like heaven and earth. I'm not waiting until I get there. I'm going to live it today. Yes. Amen. 
And I'm inviting you to live it today because I don't know about tomorrow. Like, Malik's situation has taught me now. I, I start excelling more in love. Amen. Excelling more in hugs. I excel more with the young people who came to the house and like, my house has become a, a hospital. They're crying. And some of the girls are saying, I feel it deep within. And I know women feel totally different from men. Mm -hmm. Even though they didn't birth Malik, mm -hmm. I can hear some of the girls say, it hurts. Mm -hmm. And I feel their pain. And all I can do is put my hands around them. And as they cry, the tears are just flowing. It's mm -hmm. just like naturally, like the Bible tells us, we must weep with those who weep and mourn with those who and rejoice with those who... And yeah. this is the moment when we're doing all of that. Amen. Okay? So we're not going to stop. We are marching to Zion. Amen. Amen. All right? I don't know if there is anybody else who would like to pay tribute. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, one of my sisters are coming. My blood sister and my sister in the Lord. Thank you. Good night, everyone. My name is Lorraine, and we're all sister. Malik's um, favorite aunt. Jessica. Oh. Jessica. <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm really sad. Really hurting. Very heartbroken about what happened to Malik. Malik um, was a sweet young man who loved life, full of life, and lived life. Um, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should grow, and when he's older, he will not depart from it. Malik and his siblings were trained up in a proper way because of my brother here. My brother Raul, um, who loves the Lord, and Gail, I mean, I don't know where my brother gets the strength from. He is a tower of strength. Um, in all of this, he can still praise God. And, um, you know, like the joy of the Lord is, um, is our strength. So he gets the strength from the Lord. And um, like Gail, I know the first, the first day was like very, very difficult for her. And, um, you know, like I've seen Gail, um, like she's a prayer warrior. And, um, you know, at um, functions, it's like she just takes over. But that first night was difficult. And um, <clears throat> she has a lot of support. And um, actually, everybody rallied around um, Raul, Gail, the siblings, and the Alice family. Uh, we couldn't have asked for more. Um, what can I say about Malik? Malik, um, I have an, uh, have an open door policy. Um, all my nephews, um, nieces, great nieces, nephews, they could come and visit at any time. Malik always visited and every time he comes through my door, his face is always a smile. I've never seen him upset. He would throw himself at me, knock me down, and give me these big hugs and kisses. And I am going to miss that. Um, I was so happy that I get to, uh, got to see him. Um, the last time I saw him was in July um, at my nephew's wedding. And he was very happy. And, um, you know, he would call me sometimes, but um, we haven't spoken really for a while. And... Um, Regardless of what's going on in his life, he comes, we'll talk, I'll give him advice. He didn't have to take my advice, but he always listened. So um, um, I want to say that 
I'm gonna really, really, really miss Malik. I'm gonna miss that smile. So, Malik, I know you're in a better place right now. This is not the way we wanted to see you go, but God is in charge, whatever the reason is for what happened, God knows, and God will turn uh, this bad situation around for good. And um, I pray that what happened to Malik is the catalyst that will bring these young people to God. Um, they have a perfect example in Roll and Gale. I mean, they frequent the house. Roll is always talking to them. He does not talk them, talk down to them. We we can only give them advice, and we keep giving them advice, but. They wouldn't do what we tell them, but we know they're listening. And one of these days, God's going to turn that stony, all their stony hearts into hearts of flesh. And I pray that they will be um, a pillar of light for their community. And um, I pray that God would change their hearts so that they can be witnesses in their communities for all young people. Malik, you're gone, but you will not be forgiven. You will not be forgotten. Um, you will forever live in our hearts. So my darling nephew, rest in peace. God, uh, we love you, but God loves you more. And um, you're in a good place. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Now, um, a few months before this, prior to this, but he think he was becoming older now and he think it was time for him to move out. So we welcome his independence and he wanted to do that so much. At the moment he wasn't working, but then, you know, he wants to show us that he can do the things that uh, we taught him that he should be doing. Mm -hmm. And he started working and stuff like that. Cooking. And he started doing all the things. And just the way how we used to scold him, <laughs> he moved to his apartment now and he's scolding the boys who are coming over there. <laughs> he's telling them to clean up their mess when he never wanted to clean up his mess. <laughs> He's telling me now he's cleaning the washroom and he never used to want a clean washroom. He used to mess up the washroom. So, no matter what, when you think they're not learning, they learn is when they're on their own and they realize they, they have learned so much and now they have to put it into practice. But, I love all my kids the same, but this one is more of me kind of. We dance alike, we laugh alike, we we just we we just hug alike, and, and we, we, you know we we just get so much in common. You know, so much in common. I will miss my son dearly, but my promise is not to let it stop me from praising God and not to let it stop me from being like Malik. You know, I was looking at some videos the kids were showing me. A man is playing on the sidewalk, playing a guitar, and Malik walks up and starts dancing to the man. <laughs> you know, so he was just a funny guy. No matter where we go, he just hear music and he starts dancing. So that joy, he had left. I mean, to say right now, most of his friends are very sad. Some of them are very bitter. So we have to pray for them. We have to tell them revenge is not the way. You know? And it's funny, I was reading the Bible yesterday, and one of my sons named Christopher, he called, and I was talking to him. And he has a whole lot of story and a journey he's on. But, Christopher has blessed my heart too. And I was reading the scripture and the book opened just where the Bible says, forgive, love your enemy, do good to those who do bad to you. He said, what credit it is 
if we love those who love us, there is no reward in heaven for us. So God is challenging us to love the people who are hard to love. So God, there's many people who are hard to love. Yeah. And without your grace and without your mercy, poured into us, running over in us, we won't be able to do the things that you have called us to do. But I know one thing you tell us. You have called us in your word. You say, if you want to follow me, you got to deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow me. For if you love your life, you should lose it. If you give up your life, you should gain it. So I invite anybody. Jesus say, come. And Jesus is calling us home. And from this tragedy, I've come to realize that many young people now are questioning life. Why are they here? And I look at them. And when I see big, strong, tough, macho young men crying tonight, because since and my house has been failed since Sunday, and for me it's like every moment we would sit there singing and praising God. Like last night was the hardest moment because after a joyful prayer meeting, it's like Satan just wanted to destroy that. Mm -hmm. And I spent all night like, like fighting demons. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still after five, then I put my head down and then I actually, you know, so in all the good, Satan wanted to destroy it, but we won't let him, we won't let him stop us from doing it. And like I asked my brother here, I like the drums, so I've asked him to give a tribute on the drums to Malika. I don't know if he's willing to do that right now. He is. He is? He is. Yes. God Will Make a Way. That was the song that um, um, Garfield raised. God Will Make a Way. God Will Make a Way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways that we cannot see He will make a way for me he will be my guide, hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a way.
what the Lord has been laying on my heart for the last month, really, is to pray for open heavens over our families, over our community, and over the youth in particular. And um, truth be told, I prayed open heavens over your family and open heavens. And um, for me, you know, the open heavens is this, this understanding that, you know, God comes through for us in ways we can't expect it. Open heavens is, you know, in the Bible, there's a story of Jacob really wrestling with God really going after and wrestling and holding on to the Lord and saying, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. This open heavens is um, the, the, the impetus, the start of revival. And I've been praying for a revival in our community. And I just um, want to invite um, others, those of you here who are people of faith, to just uh, pray for open heavens over the young people. And I've been Amen. seeing God answering some prayers Amen. in ways Amen. that um, I didn't expect. And as truly as we didn't expect, you know, um, Malik to be gone, we didn't expect that. But I, I, I want to affirm the word that has gone out today, that God is doing a new thing. Yeah, and I want to remind yeah, us yeah. that when the, the word says that whenever some blood is spilt, it cries out to God. And that God, you know, the, the, some of the most powerful revivals have come from the places of pain and suffering. Yeah. So we do not want our suffering to be in vain. We do not mourn as those without hope. And so I just want to invite um, people who are praying, you know, young people, people who are elderly, those of you who are prayer. And, and, and the Bible says that we should ask God to teach us to pray. It's not how loud we pray or how eloquent we pray. As a matter of fact, when we look at scripture, it tells that some of us should lock ourselves up in a room and don't, don't let anybody know what we're doing. If we decide to fast, to deny ourselves of food, we don't make ourselves look all sad and walk around. We, you know, cream our face, put the makeup on, and no one knows what we're doing. But it's this radical call. Amen. That 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 I believe the Spirit is issuing for those of us to join together in unity and pray for revival. Uh, revi you know, I, I I heard a couple of us really saying that, you know, whatever God decides, God is the judge. God is, you know, we're giving over our pain to God. We're not going to ask God for revenge. But I am going to ask God for revenge. But my revenge is revival. 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 And so I just want to invite those of us here and those of us who are seeing and listening who believe in prayer or who want to learn to believe in prayer, right? Um, just just start to call in open heavens over our young people. Open heavens over our, open heavens. And you know, um, I, I, I see Malik laughing. I see him smiling. Um, you know, uh, when I when I mentioned the mischievous thing, his mischievousness was always for something good, a good joke, a good dance, a good laugh. So, you know, let us just call in open heavens over, and, and that's the invitation. I know that's the intercession, that's the prayer that God's birthing in me um, over this, you know, throughout this situation, and God has been preparing me. And so um, if, you're, if anybody's willing to join us in that, let us begin to pray, and let us expect God to do great things. You know, good is the enemy of great. So let us expect God to do great things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hello? Hello? Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You know who this is? It sounds like one of my sons. Is there uh, yeah. Yes, it's your big son. <laughs> okay. How's it going over there? Hi, everyone. Oh, we are having a great, wonderful time. Wow, well, that's good. Because that's what Malik would want. Okay. I'm calling. You know, sorry, you won't be hearing my voice. But it's about Malik and the life of Malik. 
everybody that met with me loved me. But they never had no serious problems. And if he had a problem with you, he just mad for like five, ten minutes. He's been around two times and everything's good. <laughs> Trying to cheer you up. I love you, honey. Everybody loves you too. We're gonna miss you. But you're in a better place now. So I'm happy. Thank you for listening to my voice, guys. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you very much. And I pray that God continue to bless you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there anybody else want to? I'm home. Anybody else at home? Hello? Hello? Is anybody else want to give tip, tribute? Yeah, so that was my oldest son, and uh, you can see he is he is very, very sad about what he was away in Edmonton, and he, he got the news, and I was very sad. But you know what? We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad. We are going to be glad. And it's just like Pastor Denise say, God is doing something good. I don't know about it. She can feel it in the spirit. Yes. And we are here to fight in the spirit. Yes. And this is a spiritual battle. And Amen. it's bigger, bigger, bigger than me. It's yes. bigger than you. Mm -hmm. And we are not going to let Satan defeat us. Yes. God has already won the victory. All we got to do is claim it. And continue. Fall in our command in chief. Amen. All right. And I would like to hand the mic. Wow. Is there anybody else? Yes. Hello, good night. Hello. Hi, good night. Who is on the phone? This is Gail. Hi, Gail. Hi. Hi. Hi, Gail. Good to hear your voice, honey. I just wanted to call and to say thank you. I um, This is different. and But this is part of the healing process. And um, I'm very proud of my husband, Raul, to stand up there and to really be a, a leader in our family. Um, we trust God in all of this, and we will heal from this. And I know and believe within my heart, God has a plan. Amen. And we are submitting our will to Him. Amen. Today I'm stronger. I have accepted the things that cannot change. Amen. And I'm accepting the one who can change things. Mm. And I'm depending and putting my trust in him. God bless you all. Thank you for your support. Thank you very much. I will always remember this. Goodbye. Thank you. God bless you. And I, I'm so happy that she's doing better. Today she wasn't doing that good. But it's funny when we pray. Mm. What can happen when we rejoice? What can happen? It's just like the dead being raised again. And we have that hope. Yes. So as we are about to, if there is anything else anybody would like to say, this is the moment. Because I'll pass the mic over to Pastor Denise. Okay, I'll point some Is there anybody else? Yeah, there is. 
Jerez, hello? Yes. Hello? 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 Hello, hi. Hi, good night. Hi, Roland, that one. Hi, Alan. How are you? I'm good. You enjoying the party? Um, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is um, Christopher's poem uh, that he would like to send us. Okay. For Malik. All right. And it's called uh, Finish My Picture. Mm. I started painting a picture. If I couldn't finish it, would you pick up my paintbrush and carry on? I asked because that picture is my colorful life. Would you add some color when I'm dead and gone? Please finish my picture so others could see the bright side of the bigger picture. So finish it for me. Are you there? My life is a bigger picture. Can all of you see? You're always a part of my picture. So finish it for me. And that's from his brother Christopher. Well, thank you very much, Alan, for reading such a beautiful poem from his brother Christopher. And I know the picture will be finished. And we are all part of finishing the picture. Amen. So is there anybody more who would like to offer their condolence or tribute to Malik? Is there anybody else? Um, one second. I'm going to save all my chats. It's a bit of emotional right now for everybody. Um, it's a, I think sometimes balance is stronger when everyone's dealing with situations as such. Okay, I must tell you what's going on. Uh, we had a prayer meeting at our house before I came here and dinner. Yeah. And an abundance again. And now they're over there. Some of them were supposed to come here, but they didn't make it here. So they're still having a celebration there. But some of them are emotional. And some of them are still crying. So is there anybody else? Alan? Um, for now, um, no, no, they're gonna, they're gonna wait, they're gonna wait for the day. They're gonna wait for the day. Okay, well, tell them all, we all here love them, and it's good to hear their voices, and may God rich, richly bless them. I will. So if there is nobody else, then we will, uh, Conclude? Is it okay to do that now? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. God bless you. Okay, I'll pass the mic over to Reverend Dean. It's just her to close the Okay. So, um, as we pray, those of us here, let us um, look at each other and remember that we're all made in the image of God. And let us just make that eye contact and um, 
know who we are in Christ Jesus. Let us position ourselves to stand in the gap for, for the young people. Let us position ourselves in the spirit. Let us position ourselves in the spirit to draw close to uh, Gail Rawl, um, the children, and the family, and if, even those of us who are here, um, we're, we, some of us are honorary Ellis's right now, oh. and so we um, stand in the gap for each other. Yeah. Uh, and, and as we usher in open heavens over our community and the comfort that comes from that, amen? amen. Lord, we come before you yes. as your sons and your daughters, as your children, and we walk in our divine right yes. and the authority that you give us to decree and declare a thing. Yes. First of all, Lord, according to your word, we decree yes. and declare comfort yes. for your people. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that when we are sad, the word tells us that your spirit intercedes for us with yes. moans and groans yes. that yes. cannot be understood, yes. but go right to the Father's heart. Yes. And Lord, we come before the Father's throne boldly. Oh, we yes. rush into that throne room as sons and as daughters and we break whatever's going on right now in heaven, Lord. We just interrupt it because it's our divine right to when we run on your lap, Father God, and we run into your arms right now. And Lord, we thank you because your word says that your banner over us is love. And despite our pain, despite our grief, we are confident, we are sure that you who began the good work in us We'll see it through, hallelujah, to its completion. We just claim that right now. And in the name of Jesus, by our divine right, we usher in open heavens, open heavens over the Ellis family, Lord. That, Lord, I, I'm reminded, Lord, that a seed planted in the ground, Lord, uh, grows into something wonderful, a, a plant, a tree. A, and so we ask for that seed to grow into into its full harvest and a harvest being revival yes. we speak for revival yes. over our children yes. revival yes. over our young yes. people revival yes. over our community oh yes. lord yes. oh lord light a fire that no enemy can yes. quench yes. as we yes. see yes. salvation restoration healing lord god yes. salvation restoration and healing yes. salvation lord restoration yes. and healing and lord I thank you for Sister Gail and Brother Raw. And right now, in the name of yes, Jesus, Lord. I pray that their children will outdo them. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Their yes. children will outdo them. Yes. Lord, I think about Sister Gail, her lovingness, her, her prayer warrior mentality, Lord, her position, Lord God, her creativity. In the name of Jesus, her children will outdo her. Brother Raw, his love, his willingness to go on the highways and byways and be there for young people. Yes. His, his, his testimony, Lord God. His, the spirit of evangelism that's yes. over him. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that his children yes. shall outdo him. In the name of Jesus, you will do a thing and we will see it and we will Amen. say this Amen. is marvelous Amen. in our sight. So Lord, we do Amen. not mourn as those without hope, Lord. We place our hope in you in the name of Jesus. Abba Father, Abba Father, Daddy God, Daddy God, we run into you and we do not mourn as those without hope, but in full confidence that you can do it. You will do it in Jesus' name. So, with that assurance of faith, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us and give us peace. The peace that the world cannot give. But it's a peace that the world cannot take away. In full confidence, let those who know the living God say amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. By divine right, we thank you. Amen. 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 Well, thank you.
you all for coming. May God bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you and give you a shalom. Yes. This little light of mine. <laughs> We're going to let it shine.